Wes, I forgot to turn my mic on. Okay, how's that, you guys? Wow, well, geez. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much par for the par for the course. I'm gonna have to give you the button, so you. I know. That's how, that's why don't you do the button? Be in front of me. 
I know what's. Um, okay. But, no, you, I, you, I, always, I, you always have to be touching it and moving stuff. And... <laughs> Stop touching it. Stop touching it. Jeez, I always used to hear that. Uh, so, Glenn, Glenn from Quebec, uh, that sounds familiar, uh, but a new name. That's great. And Will Ray, WC Will Ray, thanks for joining us. And Patty Evans, beautiful downtown Fresno. Know it. And then Gail Severson is with us. Good afternoon, everyone. Mike from New Jersey, thank you for being with us, Mike and Pat Evans. Again, let's see. Yeah, the mic is off. Good grief. I, I... Hi, Jimmy Rolf. Well, anyway, so we have a wonderful show planned today. We've got uh, our own... Mr. Toddy Johnson will be joining us. Todd Johnson, one of the most fantastic bass players you'll ever hear in your life. Todd's the kind of guy, he doesn't need anybody to play with him. He plays the melody, he plays the chords, and he plays the bass. And then he's got those cymbals between his knees. And so, you know, he can play a one-man gig. Uh, so anyway... Um, We've got a good show lined up again. Did you guys get a chance to see the Joe Diario thing? Uh, the tribute to Joe Diario, I thought it was very touching. A lot of people that I saw on there that I hadn't seen in decades. It's really touching. And uh, uh, anyway, there's that Joe Diario Benita album. If you get a chance to pick it up, uh, get it. You know what was really cool about that memorial thing was he was a good artist, man. Like, they showed a bunch oh, of his yeah. paintings and yeah. his little, like, single-line drawings of these guitar players and stuff. Man. Yeah, he was uh, interpretive. Uh, yeah. Definitely very cool. Very cool. Very, very much a artistic person. Left brain, right brain. And he has a video talking about that. And... Uh, you got to check it out. Wonder, wonderful teacher. And we got here on that video is a tape of him playing with Joe Pats in a small little setting and a little bootleg tape in one of the offices, a GIT. And freaking smokes. Do you have that on this? Uh, are you going to play that? No. Nope. Okay, good. No. So, um, <clears throat> but my gosh, if there's anybody that could shut down Joe Pass, <laughs> it's Joe DiArio. I don't mean that in a... You know, that's like a childish way of talking, but uh, when it comes to music, but my God, my God, Joe Diario can play. My chop city and just, oh, unbelievable. Anyway, so, um, hey, I, you know, I meant to show you this last week, and this is a new tuner by um, uh, Diodario. Here it is right here, Diodario. And Alexis 360, I think. I shouldn't say Alexis. Somebody will start talking to me. But the beautiful thing about it is it's rechargeable. You know, so you don't have to screw around with all the batteries. You know, you just plug that in, plug it into, you know, a brief anything. And it's rechargeable. And it's got a beautiful... Uh, oh, crud. Well, so much for that. It's got a beautiful display. And I think I'm going to get a bunch of these. Um, so I've been toying around the idea of really, since we've been selling guitars, people are always asking me for strings. Uh, I think I'm going to start stocking some things and open up a little store and have my grandson run it. What do you think? You guys think? And, and this is one of the things that I'd like to offer. It's a great little tuner. One of my other uh, students said, hey, why don't you get some T-shirts and hats with the Guitar College logo on it? And I've been thinking about doing that yeah, for decades. And maybe we'll do that. So no promises at this point, but uh, I'm going to uh, explore that idea. But I think it's, I'd like to hear your response from that. So, Pat Evans, you were worried your hearing aids weren't working, huh? Jeez. Spend all that money on your hearing aids and how they don't work. <laughs> I 
would still be married if I had a microphone for my ex that I could turn off like that. <laughs> I imagine it goes both ways. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's funny in a very perverted way. Let's see. Uh, so we've got Todd coming up in a few minutes. And uh, tell you what, let's get right into something. I'm going to play a tune. Try to get my hands have been really aching me the other, you know, I don't know what's going on. The arthritis is kicking in, but I've been soaking my hands. I, I use Tiger Balm and DMSO, and one of the best things for them is to play. So I'm going to play. I love this tune. Paul McCartney wrote it when he was 16. Okay, imagine that, writing that when you're 16 for your little old dad. And then they brought it out for that Sgt. Pepper album. So I, while I'm looking at, though I'm playing, I'm looking at these comments, and I'm, I, I need to not do that. Glenn Thompson, Benita is a great album, great tunes. The music was available, book may be out of print now. Not sure. Hmm. Where is that album? I was there that day. See in the back here? It says, Mixing by Rich Sievers and Joe Diario. What do you think? Engineer. Uh, I, was, I remembered uh, the engineer, when Joe was playing and he was double-timing stuff, he was like, oh my God, he's actually playing that off the top of his head. I can't believe it. So, uh, kind of a trip, huh? Try raisin soaked in gin for your hand. It really works. You know, I used to do that. Get up in the morning and what do you eat? 16 raisins soaked in gin? Something like that? Maybe I should start that again. That At least it started the day off a little better. Ah, anyway. Oh, Wessie. What's up, Wes? Anything? Uh, no. No, but we got some guitar news coming up a little bit later, which is going to be yeah. good. We got some, some good stories for you, for you. Okay. I'm sure you're going to like it. I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> we got Todd coming up in a minute. Hey, look at this. i just been working on this guitar. This guitar is a 575, right? 
Um, when I got it, it was pretty dirty. Uh, it had a cracked uh, pickup ring. I replaced that. This, I don't know what was going on down here, and I tried to get it. Uh, the lights really kind of do it. You know, you can really see it, but you normally don't see it. But when I first got it, this was like, like somebody had taken lacquer and just with a paintbrush just threw it on there, and it was a big gob of, of lacquer. And I'm thinking... Why was that even on there? It's like crazy. Uh, so anyway, I spent a lot of time sanding it out. And I don't know if you've ever done that, but it's a long process to sand stuff out and then get the right grit. And sometimes you make it worse than it is and uh, it's touchy. So I left it like that. So it does have a little goober there, but I think it kind of blends in pretty good, don't you? It's not too bad, is it? Looks good. Yeah. So it looks like it's the grain of the wood. So it looks way better than what it did look like. It, yeah, it was, gnarly. It, was, it was sad. Also, I put a tunematic on it. And uh, the reason is is because I kind of felt like the bridge was, well, it was worn out for one. Uh, so it just didn't have a nice tone. Uh, and instead of uh, working with that bridge, I decided, well, let's put a tunematic on it. So I got a tunematic on it. Uh, we got the pickup ring uh, reversed. I've got the washers under the pick guards. It's actually got a pretty loud acoustic sound. Uh, and uh, what else? It does have a few little dings here and there, but who doesn't? I think this is a 92. Excuse me, I got this sinus thing going on too so anyway she's in very nice shape we're going to do a video on this soon right uh maybe today or something but uh, anyway if you're interested in that you let me know all right what do you think shall we bring toddy up no do a lesson first we need to do a lesson first <sighs> lesson first okay I, le I left my sheet in the house we'll have to do it later or I could just do something else. Want me to play something? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I left. Uh, it's the 251 in minor, Gail. I left it in the house. <clears throat> 251 minor lick. You know, uh, I, I was given a lesson. Let's do this lesson anyways. It's a technique lesson on rolling your fingers. Because I was, we were doing a lesson with a uh, first time guy yesterday and the key to playing adjacent strings is to get your finger to roll you don't put it you don't play like this you play so thank you sweetheart look at her Two five one in minor, but let's continue with this. So I go first. Go and by the way, these joints need to really be limber. Okay, so you need to work on getting this joint pushed down. You see that? Get that joint push down and the same with this joint that joint you you, it, you don't want that joint to be stiff so Ted Green almost was double jointed okay so that's why you can play all those weird ass chords but here work on that so you want to keep these top joints of your finger really limbered up so this is a great exercise for that Okay, do that on every string. Okay, and backwards. Now, then you do three. And you use your sweep picking.
Okay, really important. Okay, I think that would help those joints and keep those flexible, and that's really important. Okay, how are we doing there, Wes? Uh, I think we're ready for, for Todd here. Todd Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. Todd, uh, there he is. Hi, Todd. Hey, handsome. How are you? I'm doing well. There he is, in the flesh. Yep. Seven. Everything you wanted in a bass player and less. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, Todd, I was thinking of the first time I met you. It was in at GIT. Is that correct? Yeah. First time I know I met you was I was a student at GIT. We met briefly. I think I was playing in a class and you were the guitar instructor. And you don't remember that, but because it's just another stupid bass player walking through a class. But that's the first time we met. I'm not sure when you actually recollect. Well, the first time I first time I met, met you is when Mike Dana brought you out to Fresno to play. Yeah, and uh, so uh, Mike Mike uh, called me up and said, "You got to come and hear this bass player, man." And so uh, I went out there to hear, and and then you were so friendly. I I I don't know, you know, you were just so friendly. It was almost weird, uh, you know. I hear I get that a lot. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself. So uh, he, uh, uh, anyway, so anyway, we've become great friends. And uh, <clears throat> it's been a while, hasn't it, man? Yes, it has. It has. But we've got our camp coming up. Right. And that is going to be fantastic again, right? Yeah. I, I, I tell everybody, with maybe the exception of Christmas and probably even more so than Christmas, it's my favorite week of the year. Uh, not that I don't enjoy the week of Christmas, because I do for a lot of reasons, but it seems like we're always exhausted, you know, and everything. And, of course, the joy of the season and the reason for the season and Jesus' birth and all that stuff. That's all obviously awesome. But like my favorite week of the year is camp, because it, it's just so much fun to see all these people that I work with online, because all the bass players that show up wind up are my private students online. And and I actually get to see them all in person, and it's and it's it, gosh, it's just great. And the hardest I laugh all year is at camp, sitting in a Koopman room. One one of the nights, something will happen, and and that's the hardest I laugh, man. And and it, it's <laughs> yeah. the most joyous, uh, inspiring week being inspired playing with you and Mike and the guitar instructors and 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 then learning from the students and everything. I mean, it's an inspiring week. And it's just so much fun, and it's exhausting. Oh know? yeah, it's it's kind of you know. And then you get home and you're just exhausted. You go, God, that was great, but you're just thoroughly exhausted. You know, <laughs> takes a minute to recover. But but I, and I, every year I think, Gosh, this is like the best week of the year. So. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, we start the day off with breakfast, everybody together at eight o'clock, yeah. and we don't get done till nine at night. So I I know it sounds like a lot of time. It is. It is, yeah. <laughs> and, but it uh, goes fast. <laughs> it does go fast. You look that, you know, we start on Monday and Thursday rolls around. And it's like, holy crap, it's already yeah. over? You know, you're just really having fun and you, you want it to go on and on. And, you know, Todd uh, works with his bass players, but then he also will come over and work with the guitar players. And from a bass player's perspective, What's going on? Uh, a bass player's perspective, it's really nice to hear Todd talk about what a guitar player should be doing. And uh, so it's, it's really nice. Uh, so he works really hard with the, uh, with the guitar players as well. So you get a chance to have a little Todd Johnson input. Every day. Well, we we did we decided on that because uh, for my bass players, the biggest thrill for them is getting to play if they get to play with you or Mike or Pat Kelly or Frank or hope you know Ronnie this year and stuff like that. I mean, uh, that that's a priceless 
education thing to get to to really ride first class and and, and see see what that feels like and of course getting to play with Gary Newmark on drums that's that's it doesn't get much better than that, you know. That's and, right. Yeah. And, and so for them to get to play with you guys is a big thing. So when you guys work with them, you know, they get something other than what I'm telling them. And frankly, most likely, we're pretty much telling them the same things, just in different ways. And yeah. uh, and so uh, it's it's always it's always good. I I know uh, getting back to the GIT BIT experience. I know. I, I wound up playing for a when I was a student played for so many drum classes, but I learned so much about music by playing for the drum classes. Believe it or not, because I I really finally understood with confidence the way that they mark form and the language that they speak and how that relates to me and all the little nuances of getting from a Latin feel to a, a swing feel or, or you know going from a two feel to walking on the bridge and that that thing of you know a, a bar or two before you start your walking to make the transition smooth and all that there was just all these little things that was like oh i kind of did someone but i didn't know why you just kind of did them and it was such a confidence booster so going to a, a guitar player uh open counseling and getting to play with you know guys like you or ron or joe diorio or you know Scott Henderson or, you know, any, any of the guitar instructors, Bruce Buckingham, just everybody there was so good. And, and getting to play tunes with them was like everything, you know? And, yeah. and uh, so coming to camp, I think that's one of the great highlights is, you know, my guys get to work with you and you guys, your guys work with me a little bit. And, and it, I think it rounds it off really, really well. Yeah, it does. And then we have the performance at the end and, oh. uh, you know, Todd, you've got a lot of bass players signed up this year. What do you got now? Nine or ten or eleven? Uh, I have eleven signed up. I think there's just... more bass players than guitar players now. No, you got twenty on the list. I looked. Oh. oh. Um, um. But uh, um, I've got eleven signed up. Um, one of them still waiting on a date. That he's he, he was smart. He put his deposit down. So if you think you might attend, guys. Put your deposit down, and if you have to, there's a cutoff date. I, I'm not sure what that date is, but at least reserve your spot. You know, yeah. and then if something happens, you can't go. Say, okay, I can't make it by that date, or pay your pay your balance, and then you're in. You know, that kind of thing. So I got one guy that that went ahead and did that, but I got two other people. Uh, one one guy's waiting for his tax return, <laughs> and and I got I got another guy that's waiting on a on a, a vacation family date yeah. to make sure things don't uh, cross over there. But, um, and then I've got two or three other people that are, are threatening to, to do this. So uh, yeah. we, could have 50, we could have 15. Wow. That's great. That's yeah. great. So uh, it, it's going to be a nice group. I, uh, this may overall be the best group I've ever had. And it's easy to say that it sounds like a infomercial, but, but I've got a bunch of guys who are like into practicing, into shedding, and yeah. and and and, and a lot of them are in a, that time of life when they actually have a little bit of time. You know, yeah. a lot of the guys are in their late fifties, early sixties. I got like four or five guys that have retired in the last year or so, and they're just like, just like practicing fiends, man. Yeah. You know? And because they can, because they don't have to go nine to five all day or whatever, or go to court or drill teeth or whatever. And they're like, I've worked my whole life so I can do this. And they're practicing. And it's, yeah. it's really. Uh, yeah. It's our, really our age group. Yeah. Is, uh, you know, every once in a while we'll have somebody around 35 or 40. Most of everybody is 50 and over. 50 and over. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and I believe we have some people in their 70s. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, me. I was going to say you. <laughs> <laughs> and Ron. Ron, Ron. Yeah, Ronnie's 72 or 3. Yeah, yeah. he's 73 because he's 13 years older than me. So uh, I just turned 60, but uh, I just feel 70. What know? a baby. Oh, yeah. to be 60 again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hear you. You know, um, Ronnie, uh, gosh, has got such a, and we'll talk about this some other time, I guess, but he's got such a resume. I what mean, he knows everybody. Yeah. He's played with everybody. And, yeah. you know, 
uh, you know, even guys that, that feel that, like they're just starting out and, and they don't uh, really know what they're doing, it's like uh, if you knew what you were doing, you wouldn't have to come to camp. So, Correct. You know, but to hang out and see what it takes and what it's supposed to sound like and hear it, uh, that's invaluable. Good God. It's like going to GIT for a week. Right. Exactly. And, and you know, if you want to be excellent, hang out with excellence. Yeah. You know, and like you said, well, I got to I got to get a bunch of stuff together before I come to camp. No, come to camp so you can get that stuff together faster. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's in an true. accelerated manner, in a much more efficient manner, and like you said, just just sometimes it's well, not sometimes, every time it's really inspiring to see where the bar's set when they get to see guys like you and Mike and Ron or Frank Potenza, Pat Kelly. I mean, all the like, you guys are all top shelf guys, man. I mean, it it it, it's, it doesn't get any better than that. Different flavors, but you guys are as good as the the jazz guitar thing gets. And to be around that and see it and hear it and feel it and get to know everybody and realize they're just, you guys are just people like everybody else. You just, you just spent your whole life shedding and they spent time being attorneys or doctors or, or business owners or programmers or something like that. But everybody yeah. sees that and, and, and it's inspiring to see, see where that stuff's at. So, so I, I, I think, you know, if someone is hesitating for any reason, you know, like, well, I'm not good enough. Yes, you are. Shut up. Get here. Let's work on it. We'll take you where you're at. You know, yeah. The, yeah. the only thing I ask of bass players is, you know, get a hold of me ahead of time because I, I got my way of doing stuff in terminology and I want to make sure that you get the best possible experience. So I always have guys do a handful of lesson. They get used to me and my little labeling systems and all that kind of stuff and, and uh, which is proper educational stuff, but you, you come right. in and you've got an idea what to expect. And bass players, we, we learn all the tunes. We don't learn three. We learn all the tunes. All seven, and, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, um, yeah. So, so there's more responsibility on us. And, and so uh, uh, I, I like to get everybody as prepped as possible. So when you come in, we don't have to start from the ground up because there's just not enough time. Uh, uh, right. So we want to come in. We got the we got the cake bake. We just want to stick some candles and sprinkles on top, and then get it ready for performance. So, so yeah, uh, yeah. And you know what impresses me about your teaching and your guys is you have drilled into them to be professional and to be know where you are at every given moment. Yeah. Because you're responsible, you know, bass player, you know, that's the most, probably the most important instrument in a band. I'm sorry, but it is true. There ain't yeah, no bass player, no bass lines. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have a, we have a foot, we have a foot in the percussion world with the drummers. Sure. You know, we really do. We're really glued to that hi-hat and bass drum, you know, time-wise. And so, and we, because we relate and play so much there, but we also have another foot over in the harmony with you guys and we're kind of the in a sense the bridge between the two where the bottom of the chord playing the right root might seem like a simple thing but you know you guys get in all those cool extended rootless voicings and we don't play the right root and then we get looks from you guys you know you get you get yelled at by old crusty piano players ask me how i know you know <laughs> and uh um, you know that that kind of stuff. So so I've always I'm always kind of made a point of, you know, our job is to outline the root motion and imply the right harmony and to play great time and to make everybody feel as comfortable as possible. I've always made an emphasis on that. And once we got that going, then we go to for the ua ua stuff and we, you know, we learn to play melodically and solo and do all yeah. that stuff. But yeah. but uh, it's really critical to get those fundamentals together and and. Uh, and I, I try to encourage everybody to, to really learn the, the music, but if at all possible to have it memorized. So, sure. so you're playing from your heart and your ears and not just your eyes, because you know this, but the, the minute where we just have our eyes buried in the page, it's like it tends to turn our ears down and then we miss the instruction that's going on or the cue from the drummer 
or 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 the pretty girl walking across the back of the nightclub or something, you know. Uh, so so it's it's it, it's really important to have that, and then then now you you can you can start to improvise and express yourself rather than just you know with right, your eyeballs right. intellectualize everything and, and it's not mandatory but boy i don't know about you but if i got a tune memorized i play so much better than if i have to read a lot now, more fun a lot more fun. yeah and it's so much more fun and it just there's such a different like our our conversation is not scripted you just kind of told me said hey we're going to talk about camp a little bit great so we've just we're just riffing this conversation because we know the subject and we've been there yeah, and we've in yeah. a sense got the chart memorized. And so yeah. it's a very comfortable, fluid conversation. And, uh, yeah. you know, the, the music's that way as well. So I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but. Well, but, our uh, listeners are there. Hey, you know, yeah. uh, that reminded me when you talking about playing the roots, what, what you said, Barry Swag said to you, you, you play the oh, roots, yeah. I'll play the numbers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he told me, he said, you play the letters, I'll play the numbers. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, I, I, I miss him, man. Oh, I know it. I know yeah. it. I just, yeah. We had him for three years. It was so nice. Yeah, Two or three great. years. And then, you know, I was thinking, uh, Joe Diario said to me once, um, I, when, when he, I said, uh, hey, Joe, man, how did you get so good? <laughs> I just was kind of joking around. And he says, uh, Rich, I've been playing longer than you've been living. Of course, he he talked in his beatnik thing. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, he said, uh, he said, uh, man, uh, I played exactly like you one time, uh, but I moved on. <laughs> you know, everybody, and, and the same thing at camp, everybody is where all the students are at. The teachers have all been there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so we... We kind of know. We know what it's like. So uh, it's trying to get you moved on a little faster. So anyway, you know, there you have it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I I'm really had an epiphany the last few years of really trying to go back and put myself in a position where I have to think, like, what was it like when I didn't know this stuff? What was it like when I was learning theory, when I was applying modes, when I was memor learning how to memorize tunes, learning about key centers and two five ones, and you know, right. there's a point. And and so some information that we I know that I teach is like all correct, but it's like if you don't have certain things in in place, people look at you like you're 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 speaking Mandarin or something, you know. And and it's like, oh man, the best teaching that I've done is when I just keep going back and simplifying and going, what was it like? Oh, that's right. When I didn't know this, I needed to learn more about intervals before I learned about chords or whatever it might be. Right, and so right. uh, uh, that approach to teaching is, has been uh, really successful. Yeah, yeah. You're a very successful teacher. And, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of players can't, uh, are great players, but can't teach. Yeah. And yeah, uh, you've worked out systems and uh, really spent a lot of put a lot of thought into your teaching and and I think that's really important. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's uh, for me I just found to try to it's nice to see people when they get something as opposed to being frustrated after you've spent an hour with them. You know? <laughs> yeah. And and, yeah. and 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 everybody's sick of me is saying this but you know the old the old saying how do you eat an elephant? Well, the same way you eat a chicken one bite at a time. And, and that, that has been the key to just so many things in life, let alone music, but, but just trying to simplify, well, well, let's just do a bite. Let's just do yeah. this much. Let's get the roots and the fifths together first. Oh, well, that's easy. Come on, let's do the kid percept. Well, can you play the roots and the fifths? Well, no, but I want to, and it's like, yeah. ah, stop that. You know, the, the, <laughs> you know, this from, from being around Howard Roberts and everything, but, but, uh, uh, really being able to execute something is key. It's one thing to know about it. Like yeah. I can know my modes and I know the names of them and I know all that stuff and I know the scales. And I, but can I play them effortlessly from an internal place? Now, if it's only head knowledge 
it's going to be frustrating because it's going to be incredibly inconsistent for a period of time. So until that data memory, that knowledge, that head knowledge becomes muscle memory, learning music is just can be really frustrating. And yeah. you think, oh, God doesn't like me. I don't have the jazz gene. I'm not cool enough to do this. I don't have, I, people come to me, they go, I don't have good ears or, 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 or my, my, my rhythm is not good and everything. And it's like, your rhythm and your ears are just fine. They're just not developed. Yeah, yeah. You know? and, and so getting people <clears throat> to kind of get past that and go, hey, you understand it, but now we have to put it, forgive me, but Quincy Jones calls it ass power. You sit your chair, put your butt in the chair, put your ass in the chair, and you get to work, and you put in the repetition necessary to make these fundamentals internalized, you know, to where you know then they become useful. And if, if people don't understand that, learning music can be incredibly frustrating. Yeah. So, so if you understand that, you go, oh, well, I got the right things here. And if they have confidence in it and they have a method to get there, then it's like most of us like, okay, cool. Well, then I'll just sit here and keep running this stuff till it becomes automated or internalized. It. And then now playing music is a whole lot more fun. So right. that, that's, that's, that's been a key component to successful teaching, at least for me. So yeah, yeah, it's it's and and the more you learn and the better you get, the more fun it is, without a doubt. It's like playing yeah. tennis. If all you did, if if all you do is chase the ball, yeah, <laughs> it is not fun at all. You know, you hit not the ball, all. they you miss, they miss. This isn't fun, you know. It so, sucks. But once in a while, you might get a rally. We're, and for two, two or three times over the net, and it's like, oh, that's what it's going. Kind of, that's yeah, what it's yeah, like. Yeah. yeah. Well, look at, uh, gee, Todd. Thanks. I'm going to let you go because you got a lesson coming up. I got a seminar coming up in 20 minutes. So. Oh yeah. wow, wow. So yeah. I'll let you get a cup of coffee and a break. Get another and, one. Another I'll one. Talk, yeah. I'll talk real fast today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on. Here we go, guys. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, thank you, man. I really appreciate you doing this. And, My uh, pleasure, Richie. And uh, look forward to, I'll get those charts done. And I cool. look forward to. Uh, hey, I got one question here. for you. Do you know which tune's going to be our advanced tune? Is it going to be Eternal Triangle, I'm guessing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All that right. one, there's three of them. Uh, it, it's on the webpage, Group A. Right. Okay. Yeah, but there's always like six tunes, and there's always one like that's the real advanced tune. Yeah, it's and, probably Eternal yeah. Triangle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what I'm assuming. But man, that's a great tune. Oh. It is. It is. Yeah. It a is. bunch of my students. That first thing they do is they see Sonny Stitt and Dizzy Gillespie playing it at like three oh five or something. <laughs> yeah. And they, and, and they call me up going, "Hey, what's going?" On? And they're just like, "It's like, dude, we'll we'll do that like one one eighty. It'll be okay." Yeah. 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 Half <laughs> speed. Half speed. Yeah. There's half no speed. You bet. Yeah. No way, cool. Well, well, Richie, thanks. Thanks for everything, and I'll be talking to you soon. And thanks, okay. Wes, for hooking us all up. And. And yeah. Gail, frankly, for running the whole show over there at Guitar College. I know, <laughs> I know who the boss is, yeah. Yeah, me too. I do too. Thanks, thanks for having me on. Let's do this again before camp. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good to Anytime. me. Time. Say right. hi to Gay. I will. She's, she's. Uh, I think, I don't know if I told you, she's got a big promotion. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, so now she can support me in a manner I'm accustomed to. That's that's kind of a kind of a good deal. It's good to, it's good to marry a, a a a pretty woman that's got a good job, you know, when you're, when you're an old muttonhead bass player. <laughs> yeah, that's the key to success. Uh, yeah, that's marry, number one: marry the right woman. Marry the right woman, exactly. Yeah. And, and, uh, God has blessed me with that for sure. All right, pal. I'll see you later. All Thanks, right. Man. All right. Okay. Thanks, Todd. Bye bye. Peace. Bye. Well, there he is. There he is, the wonderful Todd Johnson. And uh, I think next time I'm going to have him play for you because uh, if you heard him play, you'd go, what? what? And you'd be like, holy cow. So uh, anyway, um, well, I'll tell you what, you know, I, 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 want, I got one thing I wanted to talk about. I noticed Rob Riggs. Is, are you still here? Uh, jumped in here. That's Rob, Robin R. And uh, Rob, I, I actually tried to call you yesterday. Uh, quilter amplifiers make this amplifier. And I love this amp. 
it's light and it's uh, got a great sound it's got an eight inch speaker and uh, it's t it's a hundred watts per side but it's a beautiful amp but now they're discontinuing it and um, they're going to the Mach 3 which is with a 12 inch speaker and uh, I don't think I want a 12 inch speaker. I like the dispersion pattern of eight inch. So, um, actually a couple of six inches or eight inches would be great. So Robin, I, I wanted to talk to you about your thoughts on, on that. Uh, Robin builds amps. And uh, so uh, I wonder, I just wanted to hear your thoughts about having an amp, like something like your uh, amps that you build, like a deluxe size or something, but with a couple of eights or a couple of sixes. So uh, I, I think that would be kind of neat, I, I must say. Uh, let's see, um, Dylan Johnson, is that you? Good stuff, Rich and Todd. Thanks, Dylan. Are you playing with Julie Kelly this weekend? I sure hope so. Uh, so I can play with you. And then let's see who else here. What do we... Uh, Wes, what you feel like uh, doing the news? Um, <clears throat> uh, give me one second. We do have a uh, question Can you, there from Glenn Michael Thompson. Do you, you mind doing that and I'll set up for news? Glenn Michael Thompson. The last comment there. Oh, going over the changes to Bloom Dito. Um, well, it's a bebop blues. Um, so the difference between a bebop blues and a your your stock uh, Mississippi blues or rock and roll blues is several things. You know, we have in rock and roll you got one in uh, one four five right. <laughs> Right? That's that's like rhythm and blues. Now, in a jazz blues, things things go way different. And uh, first off, it does the quick change generally. So we go to the four chord in the second measure. Okay. And then back to B flat. And then two five of the four chords. So F minor, B flat. And then yeah, when we're on the E flat chord, now this is measure five, measure six might go E minor or E diminished, excuse me, E flat minor or E diminished, and then B flat. And then it goes to a dominant six chord or two, uh, well, let, let me just go back to dominant six and then to C minor, and then to the five chord. So now it might look like this. And then it does a turnaround. I might substitute instead of B flat, I might substitute the three chord, D minor, and then the G, and then C minor. That's basically the outline. I, uh, I have that illustrated in uh, my bebop course. Um, let's see, if you... You can check that out. If, if you're interested in playing bebop jazz blues, you ought to check that course out. 
Uh, Robin Riggs, marry a woman that's too proud to have her man work. <laughs> ah, that's, that's good. Gail worked for a lot of years uh, doing home party plans and uh, helped provide for our family. So Dylan, you're already booked. You dog, man. Don't you realize some gigs take priority? Jeez. When are we gonna work together next? Come on, Dylan. You're my only contact. <laughs> All right, I'm Wes. Contact. Uh, there is one more question up here, Michael or uh, Matthew Greenberg. Uh, any tips for playing chord changes uh, over Olio? <laughs> yeah, hold on to your hold on to your seat. So, playing chord changes or soloing? Uh, it says any tips or uh, chord changes. Playing the chord changes. Well, it's basically one, six, two, five. So there's so many, so many different ways of playing it. You could go um, the B diminished instead of G. C minor, C sharp minor, D minor. And then two, five of the four chord. And then E diminished. In the one six two five. So if I, I would play that, it would sound like this. Let me do that again. Now the bridge is A minor, D minor G, C minor C, or G minor C. Mm. Now you can proceed each one of those chord changes with a half step. That's the overall thing, but when it comes time to play it, you rely on, you don't have to play every chord move. You can go. You know, uh, the, the bass player's outlining chord changes, the soloist is outlining chord changes, so you, you, you don't know, it doesn't always have to be, you know, that's so much work. So anyway, I hope that helps you. Uh, greetings from Dallas. Mark, hi, how you doing, buddy? Nice to, that you joined us. I appreciate it. Dylan says it'll be sooner than later. Okay, Dylan. I hope so. Dylan's wonderful bassist lives in the area. Ah, upright player. I should get him over here for a live stream and we'll do it just bass and guitar. Yeah, that'd be fun. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. What do you think, Dylan? Well, the space could be an issue, but uh, the, the cram final... him in here somewhere. <laughs> the final frontier. <laughs> yeah, we'll get him in here. He doesn't take up much room. Just, you know, five, six feet both ways. Do you have an electric uh, stand-up? I don't know. Do you have an electric stand-up, Dylan? Maybe he does. I don't know. It's a little smaller. Okay. So, Wes, you got the news for us? You got the guitar news? Uh, I do. Uh, it's funny here. Glenn Michael Thompson said in response to you, uh, thanks, Rich. So the real book, Volume 2, isn't very accurate in, when he was talking about Bloom Dito. So. Well, I, I I don't know. I haven't looked at it. But, um, you know, a lot of times on the uh, 
uh, um, real book, real book. You know, uh, you know that the chords might be right for the head, but then when it comes time to blowing, it's a different story. You know, so Dylan says, "Oh, he does have one. Awesome. Oh, well, that would be helpful. Yeah, because that big old body of the uh, regular one would be tough to." Been here, but an electric and then one we, then we could run them direct too. Yeah, sweet, that'd be awesome. Awesome, Dylan. Fun. Okay, well, let's book them. All right, so you guys ready for some uh, guitar news? Guitar news coming up. I got uh, some few stories for you. Uh, so we all love reverb.com. I mean, we talk about it all the time, right? Reverb did an interesting study about what the average guitar player has in terms of gear and they say that the average guitarist owns twenty one hundred forty two dollars worth of guitars amps and pedals wow twenty one forty two really and so yeah they say that uh most guys have um one to two electrics which would be you know a, usually the according to reverb the most popular strat in a telly and then most players also have one acoustic guitar which mm -hmm. i thought was strange they pointed out that this mo this is one of their top selling um guitar acoustic guitars which is why they say a lot of people have it but it's this gretsch g9500 jim dandy flat top oh really it's kind of a weird I don't know. I, it's I, like I, an old blues guitar. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I wouldn't. No, no, no. I don't know if I would buy that as my one acoustic guitar. Yeah. And then the, even it gets even weirder. The amp that they say is the most popular this year is this Fender Mustang thing, and it's essentially just a headphone amp. Oh. And <laughs> so, I don't know. I but you put all that together, and um, and then on top of that, they say that the average player has. Uh, usually has a couple of pedals, um, hmm. you know, a looper pedal, a compression pedal, and then like a pedal board that has, really? you know, multi effects like a line six or, or something like that. So pretty interesting. So I don't know where I, I bet you that have, doesn't add up to twenty one hundred. Well, if you have one, if you have a cheap you know, uh, uh, is it 2100 or 21,000? 2100. Well, oh, yeah, if, oh, okay. Yeah, Never mind. If you have a, yeah, it, it, it adds up. I mean, yeah, it, it definitely does. doesn't add up if these are a USA Telecaster or so. I'm assuming yeah, it's like a true. Japan or a Mexico that most, most people have, right? Um, but yeah, I would say you're probably how, how much do you think all your gear, <laughs> gear is worth? <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? It's, it's uh, I'd say about twenty three hundred. <laughs> I mean, you got uh, that guitar right there in your hand is like worth the, uh, you know, at least that. All right, all right, moving on, moving on. Uh, Rob Riggs that says that's twenty one hundred dollars per closet. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so another interesting story here is. Um, <laughs> We're talking about uh, John Len Lennon's son, Julian, oh, yeah. just auctioned off his private collection of Beatles memorabilia no and kidding. some personal items from his father. The items are, uh, there's three Gibson guitars, which you can see here. Um, there's a, uh, that, this coat from the Magical Mystery Tour. Oh my gosh. Um, this random cape. And then this, uh, these handwritten notes about the song Hey Jude um, that Paul McCartney um, wrote. Crap. So that's handwritten stuff. And that's $78,000. But, but wait, wait, here's the catch. And there's always a catch. What's that? This is an NFT auction. Oh, so no. the people that buy this stuff aren't getting the items. They're getting essentially a receipt that says they own it. They bought it or owned it. So are you serious? It's one of. Yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty weird, right? So, yeah, someone paid seventy six thousand dollars in crypto to buy this Hey Jude note. But, you know, they basically get, I think, just a you know, a digital copy of it and a receipt that says this is the original digital copy. 
So it's part of that big NFT craze that everyone's, you know, you, right. you guys have heard it. It's, it's all the rage right now. And uh, to me, it's just, just kind of dumb. I mean, people that just have way too much money to, uh, huh. and they know what to do with, you know. But anyway, the, the items are cool. I mean, imagine if you, I mean, if this was, if this jacket was auctioned off, it would be, I mean, in the millions, I would assume. Yeah. If, if you were getting the, getting the, um, the huh. actual jacket so yeah well all right next uh so we all know like new orleans you know it's a that's big jazz place man big jazz town yeah right? new orleans tons of jazz that's right? where it came from yeah well the new orleans jazz fest has announced their lineup uh for the festival coming up and um it's pretty weird so here's some of the artists that you see for the Jazz <laughs> Fest. The Who, uh, Stevie Nicks. I'm pretty sure that's classic rock. The Foo Fighters. <laughs> I mean, that's just not, it's so far from jazz. Jimmy Buffett. I don't even know what you call his kind of music. But I mean, Luke Combs is a country guy. Um, Lionel Richie. I mean. Not really jazz. Willie Nelson, for sure, not jazz. I mean, you got to get down pretty far, and you got to hunt around for these actual jazz artists. Nora Jones here. I mean, I guess she could be considered like a jazz singer, but yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty weird. And it's not just New Orleans. These jazz festivals all across the nation are doing the same stuff. It's like, it, are there no actual jazz? people that they can get or no big name you know jazz well, they, guys they can get them but nobody shows up yeah well i don't know i i man what, wouldn't it be cool to to have like a real jazz festival, festival? like especially yeah. like a jazz guitar festival where it's just jazz guitar players you know get some big name guys like you know george benson pat metheny that larry be... carlton I mean, some of these guys would, would come up. So we should so, do that. Yeah. So, yeah. And in, in, in two or three years from now, the, the San Luis Obispo Jazz Guitar Festival, mark your calendars. <laughs> is we're going to start start uh, looking for people to uh, sign on for that. We should do that. Yeah. I, I, I think we could probably sell tens of tickets. Den, tens. Yes. Yeah. Tens. All right, and then finally, uh, all right. So we we talked about Steve Vai last week. He he pulled his his the tendon. At, Put the camera on you. Oh, whoops. He he pulled his shoulder um, oh, pulling that's right. the pizza out of the oven, and then yeah, he had yeah. to postpone the tour. Yeah. By the way, he said the pizza was not even good, so he was like, Oh know. well, that would put a bad taste in your mouth. Yes, it would. But check this out. Uh, Vai has just revealed this. Three neck monstrosity uh -huh. of a guitar that he calls the Hydra. Uh -huh. He worked with Ibanez on it, and it has some crazy, crazy features. It it uh, has a twelve string neck with half of it is fretless with a piezo sustainer pickup controls. It's got uh, one half fretless four string bass neck, three quarter scale, one seven string neck with a pickup selector. It's got 13 harp strings on it. So you could play harp as uh -huh. well. It's uh -huh. got a thing called the seducer, the dragonizer, uh, climax regulator. It's got an <laughs> ethernet output, like in case you want to <laughs> hook your guitar straight up to the internet. And I, I assume just blow the internet up with that thing. Um, wow. so it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting for sure. Um, and here's a better look at it. And these, these are the harp strings. See, see those? Yeah. Right yeah. There? That's cool. Uh, what is that? It's got a milk bottle there or something? What, what is that round thing, white round thing? It's probably just decorations. It just, I mean, it looks like something out of a like a sci-fi movie. Um, yeah, wow, that's a trip. Yeah, so it's pretty crazy. Um, he actually, uh, why, why did he create it? I don't know. Why, too much time on his Because why not? <laughs> 
But anyway, so and he so here's another thing about it is um, yeah he wrote a song about it. It's on his his new album. We don't have the rights to it, so we're not going to play it. But this thing is also going up for auction um, as a uh, as an NFT thing. So you're not going to get the actual thing. You're going to get a receipt for it that says, you know, hey, I have this. Um, you own it. I own uh, I own the digital copy, uh, the original digital copy of this guitar. And uh, but this one at least is um, a little more affordable. I think the last I checked on the auction, it was sixty two bucks. So it's not like this some crazy seventy six thousand dollar thing. So if you did want to want to buy it, it's like. 0.02 of a crypto coin or something. Huh. Uh, so that makes me think, you know, maybe you should auction off your the L5 as an NFT. I think, yeah, I think that's auction, a great you know? idea. Yeah. You might be able to get, you know, 15 bucks for, <laughs> for a digital <laughs> receipt that says, that says you... Uh, that's all they get is a receipt? You get in like a digital what you would get like you don't get the guitar you'd get maybe a photo of it that says I am the original owner of this NFT thing so I don't know what the the hype around it is kind of weird it just doesn't I could see it being like a working well for songs like if you have the yeah, original file of that song or right. an original like I don't know. It, songs are the only way that I can like comprehend it. Is like it'd be pretty cool to have the original, you know, re recording of the song. I, huh. I don't even know if you get that, but kind of, I guess. So, anyway, well, that's uh, that's your guitar news, everybody. Wow, good job, Wes. Woo woo. Wow. Well, we'll have to find out about that NFT stuff. <clears throat> yeah, maybe we ought to have a guitar, jazz guitar festival. Would any of you guys come? If I could get pre-sell some tickets from three years from now, maybe we, we could build it up. <clears throat> maybe you can sell the tickets as NFTs. That's a good idea. Right? This is a ticket. <laughs> you don't get to go, but you have an NFT of it. Yeah, the jazz festivals. Yeah, it, it's uh, weird. It disappoints the jazz enthusiasts. No kidding. Come on. Jeez. Oh, well. But because uh, there are plenty of jazz artists, you know. But I, I wish they wouldn't even put the, the word jazz in there. Usually jazz will kind of, uh, <clears throat> you know, scare people away. Oh, what? I don't want to hear that jazz stuff, you know. Sounds like everybody playing a different song. So, um, anyway. Uh, well, let's play a tune. Or should, should we do another lesson? What do you think, Wes? Help me out here. Song or lesson? Uh, do a song. Song. Do a song. That way I can change the battery in my, my camera back here. All right, so here is um, a song. I'm going to play it, and it won't take long. Summer Samba. Let's get a different beginning. Whoops. Wow, well, that drummer's really a... Uh... Getting tired back there clicking those sticks.
That was called So Nice or Summer Samba, available at the Guitar College Library for your listening and dancing enjoyment. Kirby, what's happening, Kirby? I hope you're doing well, buddy. <clears throat> when am I going to see that? By the way, you called, and I'm sorry I dropped the ball on this. You wanted to take a lesson, and uh, let's get together. I will call you soon, and we'll set up a time, because I want to see that guitar. Uh, D. Krebs, Kebs, that backing track doesn't do your playing justice. Well, thank you, but I tell you what, they don't scream when you put them in the trunk. You know, Dylan Johnson, bass player, he doesn't like going in the trunk of the car, you know, on the way to the gig, but... Oh, Montreal Jazz Festival was the first for a dozen years or so. Still a great festival. Not uh, but much better. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Ab uh, Abrar, too, says Japan and Taiwan have su superb jazz festivals. Well, so yeah. I, I wonder, do they get actual jazz people? Like, who, what Probably, kind of yeah. Uh, jazz is an American art form enjoyed by Europeans. Well, and Asians. And well. Asians. Yeah, Joe Pass would go over there to Japan and play and get paid a lot of money. Uh, and people loved it. <clears throat> so we've had some uh, fellas from Japan come to our camp in the past. Kind of fun. Let's do now a lesson, shall we? Or what are we going to do now, Wes? Yeah, do you, that, do that one third up, one third down thing. Oh, okay. All Instead right. Instead of the two five one, since okay. we did one of those last week. Okay. All right. So here's a little idea on playing thirds. You know how thirds are da 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 like this. And then we play them down backwards. Uh, right? Now, <clears throat> if we go one down and one up, we get this. Let me do that again. And then we move to the next higher note and go back. Going down, it sounds like this. Playing one down. There is a song uh, called Eternal Triangle, and the bridge goes... And when you listen to that, a third up and a third down. So now we're just playing playing these um, as an exercise, but if I played them as a soloing thing, um, you, you could get stuff like this. is very musical. It's a musical idea. And uh, it's not so predictable as. It's more musical, isn't it? 
So practice your scales like that, okay? Play your thirds. Up and down, get that feeling, okay? And, uh, and then I th if you use it in your playing, I think it really enhances your playing. So hope you enjoyed that. Is that enough, you think, for a lesson? I hope so, because that's all I got on that. Um, do you have a uh, play? It? Do you have a song that you can play that play some of those licks with? I probably do. Let's do that. All right. Well, I was going to play um, Pen Up House, but uh, l let me see if I can find something else to play on that. Um, stop! 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 It's alive! It's alive! Stop, stop, whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, here was this vamp thing, uh, E minor to D9. some funky funky uh, percussion in get there. down with your bad self you funky monkey uh so anyway yeah that that uh you can do that uh i i should practice that more myself so don't feel like you uh <clears throat> it's hard to do it, it's a little tricky to do but and to put it into a uh tune that works um uh, does anyone have any questions? Questions. I have some questions, man. Fire away. You need to. You need to. Something yeah. really hard. Really. <laughs> like you know, what's the square root? By the way, do you know where most, most, you know where most math teachers like to spend their vacations? Times Square. God, that's funny, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I did hear a good joke. Yeah. A guitar player joke. Okay. Um, what's the difference between a lead guitar player and a terrorist? What's that? You can actually negotiate with a terrorist. <laughs> you know the difference between a heavy metal guitar player and God? God knows he doesn't play guitar. All right, just <clears throat> that's not bad. That's not bad. That was pretty good. Where do you throw a drowning guitar player? His amp. All right, learning by ear versus learning standard by heart from a real book. Uh, well, <clears throat> you want to do both. You want to uh, really. I think learning uh, in the beginning, 
uh, you want to use the real book to, to give you the chords, but then start doing a lot of listening, okay? And so when you're hearing a song, listen to a version and try to play along. Now, <clears throat> if it's in another key, that's great because now you've got to make the transposition uh, to a new key, and that's going to help your ear too. So use both, okay? I don't think you need to get the standard. You don't have to, you know, do it by ear all the time, but do both. Kirby, Lord willing, planning on going to guitar show in Santa Monica. Oh, Santa Maria. Oh, that's right, March 26th. Forgot right. about that. There's one here, Wes. Yeah, we should go that? to that. We'll do that. Is that like a just a buy and sell thing? <coughs> Is it a what? The buy, you know. Yeah, buy you... and sell. Nice. That's where I bought that um, uh, L5 one year. Sweet. In yeah. Santa Maria? Santa Maria. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, were you going to do that Joe Diario thing, or did mm. you not do no, it? No, I didn't do okay. it. Sorry. Well, let's just play another tune and let's call it a day. Wait, here, here's a que here's another question, real quick. Uh, are you a Veritone fan? And what is your string gauge? You know, I've never had a guitar with the Veritone on it, so uh, I <clears throat> I would be a fan if I ever had one. Uh, that was their answer to the Stratocaster or something. But uh, and can you yell out your string gauge? Yes. Your football thing. Okay, this these are flat wounds. <clears throat> Forty-eight, thirty-eight, twenty-eight, twenty, fifteen, thirteen. Hike, and like I said, I've got a lot of students that that want those gauges, and and every you know you have to buy a set of Diodario extra light, and then buy two singles, and a lot of guys are having problems with that. So I'm thinking. Maybe I'll just buy a whole slew of them and, and offer them for sale. What do you think, Wes? Should we go into the retail business? Well, those strings, I mean, everybody asks you about what's, what that, the gauge is and stuff. So I'm sure you would sell, sell think, them. And if it's a pain in the ass to buy a set of strings and, yeah. and two singles and you made it easy for people to just buy it all in one pack, then... True. I would, I, I mean, if I was trying to do it, I would buy a whole pack from you rather than go buy a pack of Diodarios and then right. two singles and then throw away <coughs> the other two or whatever you do. What do you have, like 5,000 of those other ones? I do. I, I, I had 120, <laughs> 120 uh, tens, and I need to put them on eBay or something before they all go rotten. Uh, 120 of them. So I, I I could divide them up and just I I got so much stuff that I need to sell and get rid of. Uh, do you have a uh, a recommendation for best budget jazz amp for practice? No. The uh, Quilter Cub, Cub it's called Aviator Cub. Go check them out. I got one in my room. I think it's a great sounding amp. It's a 12-inch speaker. It, it, you can do a lot more than, than than just practice with it. It's a bitching amp. So I haven't ever gigged with it, but because I like the sound of the eights. And so Rob Riggs, you got to call me or something. Rob, have you ever heard of Sawtooth? Hey, let's, let's play this. Uh, a guy called me and wanted to buy this, and I have it for sale. And when it came right down to it, I said, I don't want to sell it. Well, I got, so I got to get it off the web page. It's, I, I, want, I took lessons from Mitch Holder in high school, not high school, uh, college. And he had one of these. His is a custom. But, uh, oh, where's that new tuner? Do you want to see this new tuner in action? It's got a really nice display. Can you see that? Look at that nice big display.
Don't have to hassle with batteries. How long do you how long does it stay? 24 hours of tuning it says. I mean, gosh, that would last you a couple months, right? Well, unless you're like me and you 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 forget to shut it off in the middle of then you realize it's been on for the last 10 songs you've been playing. Right. Anyway, somebody asked to buy this guitar and I said, uh, or actually. He, yeah, I was about to do a little video on it and he calls me last night and says, don't, don't do the video, <laughs> I, I wanna keep it. Yeah. It was like a game time decision there. <laughs> Um, okay, Arnold says, this is the happy part of my Thursdays. Oh, that's nice. Me, me too. All right, so here's a tune called Pen Up House. How do you like the sound of this? I've had two of these, and uh, it's got a little low Johnny Smith pickup, <clears throat> solid spruce top. Um, <clears throat> the other one I had wasn't as lacquered up, and I thought it had a little different voice to it. Well, it did. It, so even within the same model, different different color, it had a little different voice.
I don't know. It sounds pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, <coughs> so look at, we're going to say goodbye, and I want to thank everybody for joining us. Please check out the Guitar College Library. Thank you, Wes, for all you do for this show. And Gail, thanks for hanging in there and doing Oh, yeah, real, qu real quick, though, we're, we are giving away uh, <coughs> free lessons every Friday starting tomorrow. And to get the free lesson, you got to go to guitarcollegelibrary.com and you'll scroll down and you'll see a place to enter your email address. And you enter your email address and we'll send you out an email on Friday. You'll get a coupon code. You can go to the library, get access to this lesson and you have it for, for however long. So literally oh, you wow. can just go every week, get a free lesson. You'll have so much material and we just want to, you know, you know, um, say thanks to all you guys who, who watch all our stuff on YouTube. And so make sure you go uh, put your email into that um, to subscribe to the newsletter. So at every Friday, you'll get a new code hmm. and get a new lesson. And you don't even have to pay any money. It'll be free. Free lessons. Wow. Um, but you, you have to act somewhat quick. We'll send the email out on Friday. And then you got it. You got to use the code by Sunday. But once you get the lesson, you'll have it for six months. So make sure you go to Guitar College Library and click on the thing. You'll see the big Friday freebie thing right there on the home page. Um, and oh, cool. Yeah. So so that's going to be uh, cool for us, and um, we're hoping that you guys all <coughs> all take. So it's a, of is it, it a, a do, do they get any lesson they want, or, or we're no we're we we'll, we're going to pick the lesson each week. Oh, I see. Okay. Cool. Um, we're going to bounce around, have some variety. Um, so yeah, it's going to be some cool stuff though for you guys to learn. And again, no money. Just wow. we just want you to keep watching and keep being a part of uh, of what we do. Oh, it's nice. So who's going to pay you? Well, um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, God is going to pay me. Yeah, he will. Uh, by the way, if you like what Wes does, leave him a tip. And... Uh, and uh, he would really appreciate it because he puts a lot of time into this. Okay, hey, I'll see you next uh, Thursday.